welcome to our second meeting with uh, Tommy Kelly. Thanks for having me again, Nika. Let's again shortly introduce each other, um, ourselves, because maybe somebody new completely uh, don't, doesn't know who we are and why we are meeting. So I'm Nika, I'm from Poland and I am a vegan activist. I'm Tommy Kelly, I'm from Ayrshire in Scotland. I'm a former vegan activist of four years, just recently stopped being vegan over a year ago due to health issues. I will introduce also Nasi, he's with me. He's one <laughs> of my guinea pigs. I have seven adopted guinea pigs and he was just noisy. That's why I took him. Lovely. That's why he's going to be with me today. We are both highly interested in religion and morality. And we think which is right, which is wrong, why we should do things in this way or in that way. Uh, as far as I know, you are also very interested in uh, such things, yes. Yeah. And um, this is the reason why I am highly interested in Primal Edge Health's content and his activity. And I met you there. Uh, you are you, you you are his close friend, yes. Can you call yourself his close friend? Yeah, I would I would I would say so. Yeah, me and Tristan is in quite close contact, quite a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and. Uh, you were his guest um, several times, yes? Yes, in his live streams. So, on, yeah. But tell me what exactly your religion is, because uh, Tristan is also dog. I've basically been a, I've been in the Church of Scotland, which is the Protestant Protestant church yes. here in, in Scotland for all, yeah. Yeah, of, all, all my life, actually, since I was about maybe about five years old. I started going to Sunday school. Mm -hmm. which I don't know what they, what they would call it in your country, but basically that's the the, ch mm -hmm. the church for mm -hmm. kids and things like that. So my my grandmother my grandmother was actually a Sunday school teacher, so that that was kind of where it all started for me. But my grandfather like, taught me everything about the Bible. We would sit for hours and end each day and through various sections of the Bible. So that's where I learned a lot about Christianity. And like I say, I started church when I was five years old. I've been in it all my life. Recently, recently I've got into Christian Orthodox. I would say I'm, I'm, I'm not in really into it yet. I'm looking at it. I've been going to like certain uh, sessions and things like that, trying to learn a bit, a bit more about it, just to see if it's different from what I'm actually been taught at the moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, is it because of Tristan? Are you inspired by Tristan? No, well, yeah, quite a few, quite a few people. I just thought I, I'd looked into obviously Christian Orthodox before, and it's more like, more about the kind of Old Testament and things like that. So that was kind of what I always kind of believed the Bible to be, and I believe that that's probably the teachings that we're not really getting in the Church of Scotland at the moment because they're they're very different. They're going in a different direction, and I felt I just wanted to see what the other side was. I'm not saying that that's I believe in Christian Orthodox. I just want to see what they're offering to see if it's, it aligns with myself. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, religion and analyzing the concept of God is one of the main topic of my channel. Yeah. I will not. Uh, I will skip introducing myself di uh, deeper right now. Uh, mm, please come to my enough. channel, be, yes, because there will be multiple videos on this topic. So this would take too long if I uh, if I try to tell my history right now. So I will skip that because I will you can actually, you can actually do that in the next video as well. I think that would be really good to get, delve into that. Uh, because I wanted to uh, discuss with you Tristan's opinion on a topic which is very closely related to you and your activity, your I don't know whether it's professional activity or not, because uh, this is not a um, mystery that you are advocating for people with eating disorder. And um, is it your profession or it's your you are working as uh, voluntarily? Yes. Yeah, so obviously I've had an eating disorder in the past. And wh when I recovered, I actually wanted to start helping people. So I've, I'm a really strong media advocate. I've been in various TV articles. I've been mm -hmm. in newspapers, so I was I was like a media ambassador at one point. So then I stepped in and I started doing online support with some of the charities here in the UK, mm -hmm. and I became a qualified eating disorder recovery coach. So I coach various people. I've got around about ten clients that I, I train free of charge at the moment. I just try to help them as much as I can, and don't get any reward for that. I just do it obviously to help them. So 
something I'm really passionate about. So I'm sure that part of your job is to uh, remove shame of those people. Um, I'm sure that part of your mission is to start talking about these issues loudly. I even read in, in one of articles that this is very important. This is something um, that you are very welcome. Sorry, again, sorry if my English is incorrect. Uh, but you are welcome because as a man who is speaking about anorexia, because usually we associate anorexia with girls. Yes, mm -hmm. girls who want to be, you know, cool and look good. And uh, we never thought of anorexia uh, about men with anorexia. Actually, for me, it's also the first time to hear about uh, this situation. So definitely you'd like to talk about it and you'd like people to stop feel ashamed of that. Yes, absolutely, because Mm -hmm. there's, there's a real big stigma around men with eating disorders because a lot of people, especially in society, believe that eating disorders are a predominantly female illness where that's not really the truth. The only reason it's not as reported as much at the moment is because a lot of men struggle to come forward and admit their problems due to the societal kind of impression that people have about that. But actually they're saying at the moment there is roughly around about one in three men actually suffer with an eating disorder. So it's get really, really high at the moment because a lot of people are now feeling they can come forward and speak about things because a lot of males have actually opened up about it, especially celebrities like the cricketer Freddie Flintoff in the UK and Christopher Eccleston, the Doctor Who actor. So a lot of these people that are high celebrities have actually opened up and helped other people come forward. People tend to blame those people, especially maybe not anorexic that much, but for example, people with bulimia or, you know, there are some very fat people, so people yes. are laughing at them, they are blaming them that uh, it's a day of fault, yes? Yeah? So your job is to change this thinking, to talk about it, to perceive it as a disease, as a serious problem, uh, not really um, a their fault yes absolutely yeah because yes. a lot of people a lot of people believe these things are self-inflicted whereas really it's not the person that wants to do these things it's a mental issue that's going on in their head and food is a coping skill to deal with things that are obviously going on in their life so it's important that people understand that it's not about the food it's about the issues that the person is suffering and food is one way to obviously control other things that are out of their life that they can't control Mm -hmm. Therefore, I wanted us to, I wanted actually you to comment on uh, Tristan's uh, post. Uh, he recently published uh, a post on his um, community tab, which was, uh, he shared uh, Orthodox Church's post on this topic. Let's read it and I, I would like to hear your comment and I hope it will provoke the further discussion. Uh, I will share my screen so we can see, see it. I shared. Okay, so let's see uh, this uh, post. So um, this is Tristan's opinion. And how do you feel um, knowing that this is his opinion about also people like you? Uh, thin, uh, thin is the ice between contraception and sodomy. The devil trains our minds to accept unnatural contraceptive sex as normal. In ancient Rome, the rich elite at their parties used to eat too much delicious food, then vomit and again eat and repeat this process several times to eat food and then vomit it uh, and then again to eat is a grave sin. Just, just as contraceptive sex is gravely, uh, sorry, gravely sinful. If heterosexuals can satisfy their lust through the butchery of and contraceptive and natural sex, why shouldn't then sodomy be, be okay for the homosexuals? So we see that already eating disorder is compared to homosexuality. Uh, indeed, brothers, if we want to preach against grave evils such as sodomy and abortion, we should uproot it at its root. And that is to reject the devil's sexual contraceptive revolution mindset that was started in the 20th century. Uh, so how do you feel 
being part of this group of homosexuals, of people using contraception. Of course, I would like to hear also your opinion about contraception, about abortion. And how do you feel be a part of this? Did you well, know that this is uh, Tristan's opinion about people like you when you were there? Because he, you were his guest also this, um, you didn't wrong her was also his guest. I wonder whether she knew what was uh, the opinion of Tristan about such people like her. To be honest, I, I don't know if that's obviously Tristan's opinion. I've never heard them say anything like that before because he's never, he's always been really supportive of people that's got eating disorders. It was actually him that quite a few of the people that reached out to him to actually get help he actually put them in touch of myself and sky obviously you did it wrong i think i i don't i don't really know if that's just him sharing the orthodox belief obviously there's certain there's certain in, in some religions they do believe that eating disorders or are like demon possession type thing so that's not my belief. I'll put that right out there because I don't believe that in the slightest. But I do that in Christianity. They do believe that sometimes when you're suffering grief, stress, or any thing that obviously interferes with your life, that demons latch onto you, mm -hmm. and they believe sometimes they believe that eating disorders can be a way that demons play out these things to obviously affect you. Mm -hmm. That. I'm so not, I'm do you think to... that Tristan shared bullshit? He didn't think about what he was sharing? I really don't know. I think he's probably... I don't really know. I don't really understand the part, obviously. I don't know enough about the kind of historical side of the, the, Rom the Romans and obviously why they would make myself vomit and sick i think it I was think because it's something it's a sin it's a it's a sin we cannot say that it was a sin um in case of roman but it's not a sin in case in your case uh, don't you think that maybe tristan doesn't think critically he's just taking anything anything and maybe he at the start point when he accepted orthodox religion he wasn't even aware what is the doctrine fully aware so he's like learning oh now he maybe now he learned that People like you are um, gr grave sinners, or, um, and maybe he didn't know, but he's accepting everything, everything. Just now he learns what he believes in. He didn't know what he believed in originally before. Now he learns, ah, this is my opinion. He didn't know what was your, his opinion about you until now. So now he learned what is his opinion. Don't you think this is very dangerous when somebody subscribes to a religion not even fully aware what is it exactly about because i'm sure he didn't know many things because i already realized that he doesn't know bible well uh, so so i think this is very dangerous that he's accepting everything he will never say no this is wrong yeah i would uh, you would have to probably ask tristan i don't know his, his beliefs on certain things to me, I don't believe that is his belief at all. I don't mm -hmm. because I don't believe he believes it in that. I think he's just he's probably taking excerpts from that and he's sharing obviously I think he what he's really talking about is the, the contraception side of things because he obviously believes that what he's coming he's basically coming at it a stance the way certain vegans obviously talk about that they don't want people to procreate because they believe that humans are a kind of scourge on the earth because they believe that we're destroying the world. I think that's probably about Tristan sharing, but he's probably not understanding the rest of what's actually in that context, if you see what I'm saying. Uh, what is your uh, opinion about contraception and about abortion? Oh yeah, well, contraception, I believe it's essential because out, outside of a happy marriage, I believe that contraception should be marriage, obviously be be obviously compulsory because a lot of people end up with sexually transmitted diseases we've seen this really really big rise in sexually transmitted diseases we see couples actually having children that they end up in a broken obviously home and they don't have a mother or a father and things like that so contraception really has its place but in a healthy marriage where the actual couple decide that they actually want to have a child and obviously have a future together yeah, I can understand why they don't have it there because, yeah, you would. 
But outside of that, I do believe that contraception should be mandated, really. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about abortion? Abortion, pff, to be honest, I disagree with it in, in certain cases. I believe that I can understand it when a woman, say like a woman's raped or anything like that. I hate using that word, but it's a disgusting word. But if a woman's raped and she obviously doesn't want to have the child, I can understand why she would do that. Or if the child was going to have like birth defects where the brain was outside of the body and the child wasn't going to survive, then obviously, yeah, it's okay. better for obviously... Okay, so in some extreme cases, you would accept this, yes? Yes. Okay, so do you know that uh, right now in Poland we are going through a uh, fierce battle above uh, the new abortion law, which forbids every, every kind of abortion. So also uh, when your life, the woman's life is in danger, when, or for example, when they already know that the child has no head or the brace is outside of the body because there were such cases, yes. such cases in Poland. So right now it's also forbidden also in this kind of cases. And this is also a very interesting in context of uh, Tristan's belief because he believes that um, Polish church, which is uh, basically it's a Catholic church, is satanic church. So satanic church uh, forbid abortion fully, completely. So that means that according to Tristan's thinking, Satan forbids abortion in every case. What do you think about this? Yeah, well, there's obviously a lot of things going on at the Catholic Church at the moment. I think there's there's quite a kind of uprising, and I think that a lot of people are kind of touching towards like Christian orthodoxy being the religion of the future and things, which I, I don't know enough about. Like I say, I'm, I'm really, I don't know enough about the, obviously, the Orthodox Church and how things are actually going at the moment, but I do know there's a kind of a lot of issues with the Catholic Church, especially like the, the kind of molestation type things that's going on at the moment. I'm not one to obviously ab ab abuse Andy's religion because everybody believes what they want, but there's different things that need to be looked at. But I don't believe it's satanic. I mean, I, I suppose. <laughs> okay, I so you don't believe that the Catholic Church is satanic, yes? And that, that it was Satan who for for being. No, because I've obviously got I've obviously got family members that are in the Catholic Church. They are devout. Catholics so they are not well. satanists. No, I wouldn't say they're satanic, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's what the Tristan said. So, okay, yeah. so you just, you, okay, so I understand now that you like Tristan as a nice guy, as a person, but you don't take seriously everything he's telling, yeah? So just, yeah, you don't well, care about his posts, about what he thinks about obviously, eating obviously, disorder. Me, me and Tristan are, like, we're, we're, we've got a mutual respect on certain things as well, but... He doesn't. He obviously doesn't believe certain things I believe, and I don't believe certain things he believes, which obviously is very normal because we don't always want to think the same. Like I say, it would be a very boring world if we all thought the same things and we just blindly followed people and basically became a clone of them, which I think is, think for yourself, make your own decisions, follow your own path. I think that's the way everybody should live. Okay, so I also would like to ask your opinion uh, about your opinion about... Uh, gays, because uh, as you can remember in that post, uh, Orthodox Church's post, um, people with eating disorder were placed in the same group with homosexuals. So what is your opinion about homosexuals? Because you are advocated for people with eating disorder, because you say uh, if this is not their um, mm. They fault. This is uh, there are so many conditions which result in in such a disease, in such a problem. How about people, uh, gay people? Do you blame them for being gays, or you have no problem? You accept them fully? What do you think? Well, obviously, to put you in context, I've got a brother-in-law who is gay, so yeah, so I mean, you have a brother. You say you have a brother. Brother, brother-in-law. Us, I see. Okay. So my wife, my wife's brother, she, he's actually gay. He's in a he's in a marriage with another man at the moment, happily married, having a great life. I mean, and, and you fully accept this? You have completely zero problem with this? Yes. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Because the way I look at it, the only time I would have a problem with any like gay type thing is when the, obviously there's kids involved or when it's not mutual. 
that is the only thing that I would have a problem with. If it's in a mutual relationship and the other person is agreeing to it, I don't see a problem with that. Everybody should be able to live their life and live live happy and be the person they love. That's my opinion. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So I see there is a, a huge difference between you and Tristan. So you are like friends, but you, your opinions are from completely different worlds. So yeah, I, you know, yeah I, just, I dare say a lot of the things that I say he totally disagrees with. But yeah, we can we can respect each other. Like, that's what it's all about. We're friends and we respect that, I would say. I see. I see. Okay. Um... What do you then? Of course, I understand that you. Everybody has the right to uh, his right to choose the activity uh, proper for him, which is his pri um, priority. But would you advocate also against gay shaming? Let me read uh, to you one um, uh, some comments uh, in a discussion I took part in recently so i heard that gay is a general insult that means uh, beta which means you accept submission to a master so uh, someone suggests that uh, the word gay is you currently use as general insult which of course i don't know because this is uh, english word so this is your culture not mine so this is what i'm learning because me, I used to take the word gay, literally, gay means homosexual for me, yes? And, but now I learned that the word gay has, be, uh, has come to mean something that is questionable or not very good. One broadcaster in the UK was reprimanded for using the word in this sense in a live radio episode. He was uh, recently accused of homo homophobia, again, despite the fact that one of his closest friends Friends is a gay man. Let's not forget that the word gay originally meant innocent or joyful, jo joyful uh, before it was hijacked. Uh, it has been hijacked again, I think, as a back backlash uh, against uh, a perceived agenda to push, I don't know what it means, agenda to push a homosexual or transgender lifestyle. <laughs> Let me finish on okay? <laughs> I have a problem with this guinea pig. He is already on me. Uh, agenda to push a homosexual or a transgender lifestyle uh, onto young people. I would welcome your thoughts. Okay, this was... I must put him back to the cage. Sorry. Okay, I'm back. Uh, so you are fighting against body shaming against uh, blaming uh, people with eating disorder uh, for right. their um, problem also aesthetic problem because it's also very often it is aesthetic problem people despise especially super fat people so i think uh, you know fat, fat people have bigger problem but maybe skinny people i don't know maybe skinny people also have this problem and yeah, well, it's, it's, it's very mixed, I would say, like, it, it's, it's both exactly the same, but at the same time, a lot of people don't understand about eating disorders, like, there's a genetic component in that, and it's something in your life that triggers that, that obviously causes the eating disorders for, for myself, it was obviously grief and loss of my mum, and that, that kind of takes us back to your point earlier about abortion, to, get, to give you full context of how my eating disorder actually started, my my mum actually suffered long term cancer when she was actually having me in the womb. She actually had cancer in the womb, and she was told by her doctor that she actually could have me and live with the cancer, or abort me and be free of the cancer. So I didn't find out until my mum actually passed away from cancer seventeen years later that 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 was the reason why she actually passed. It was because obviously having me, and I blamed myself for her passing, which what? actually which actually caused my eating disorder, so kind of ties into actually what you're talking about, so I thought that was good mm -hmm. to obviously bring up. So you see that things are much more, way more complicated. I heard, I love to uh, to have heard your story because it explains a lot how life is complicated, how we should not judge things that this is grave sin, you know, just. You know, a man who sits somewhere in Russia, who is a friend of Putin, and it's, you know, he has a full table, he had never experienced any true yeah. problems in his life, 
and he is trying to judge and um, I hate this. To be honest, I hate this. I'm allergic to this. I don't know why Tristan is trying to limit his own thinking in this way, just to follow, follow everything he hears. Uh, because you explained a lot right now. But would you also tend to uh, advocate against gay blaming? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that's one thing I've actually said quite a lot about because quite a lot of people do have that kind of stereotypical stigma about eating disorders being a predominantly gay thing, which that's also, far from the truth. Yes. So yeah. you also used to be perceived as gay? Absolutely. Because you, are, so you were skinny? At one point, I've actually had this with people in the vegan community as well, which I want to actually put out there. There's a lot of people obviously commenting certain things, saying that I'm gay and things like that and nonsense. So there's a big, there's a big amount of people still like that. Whether, what, no matter what lifestyle you follow, but even at one point when I had an eating disorder, people actually thought that as well. Oh, he must be gay because he's got an eating disorder. <laughs> like, oh, jeez, I, I didn't know. know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a stereotypical thing, unfortunately. Yeah. I think for a strong personality, it doesn't matter, yes, that somebody calls you gay, you, you just don't care. But for sensitive people or weaker people... Um... Yeah, it can be really, really damaging, obviously. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I thought that maybe Tristan's followers and supporters um, share his opinion in many things. So now I see that not necessary. And uh, I see rather that you are sharing my opinions in many cases. I am uh, happy that uh, you don't have problem with accepting other people, people with other problems. That I covers think, a lot of people that I actually help. So. <laughs> yeah, you are trying to help people, yes. Uh, by the way, do you know personally? Do you have any gay friends? Mm. I do. Yeah, I've have. I would say probably four or five. Mhm. Mm yes, and they are good friends. Yes, you have no problem with them. Absolutely not. Yeah, well, one of them I actually had on recently on my Road to Recovery podcast, which is we do eating disorders on there. That's he's Ethan Eisenberg. He actually had an eating disorder in the past. He's actually gay. I've got probably a few in England that I'm friendly with. Obviously, like I say, my brother-in-law, he's obviously gay. I've got another friend who actually I grew up in school with. He's gay. Never been a problem. I do I do, I do my thing. I'm, I'm, I'm very confident being a straight man. They can live their life as well. It doesn't even interfere with mine, so... Would you challenge, um, would you dare to challenge Tristan um, on those topics? to talk about his opinion about gay people or or eating disorder in terms of his uh, I, think, I think it would probably be I think it would probably be good for you to have a chat with him as well probably understand maybe where he's coming from because he's obviously got a live stream tonight I believe at eight o'clock or is it one yeah I think it's eight o'clock East Road Centre time probably do that I would say maybe get a, understand where he's coming from maybe another day we will meet again I don't, I don't, I don't think, I think Tristan's got his beliefs, I've got my beliefs, I don't think he's ever going to change them, and like I say, I, he, he'll disagree with me and things, I'll disagree with me, but I've got respect for him, and he's got respect for me, so I would hope that that's the way it would be. But do you respect somebody's aggression towards other people who you also respect? Or you think you should say no? Maybe maybe you should protect your brother-in-law, not to respect his very aggressive standpoint uh, towards your brother-in-law. Yeah, but all we always yeah. should respect, even with uh, somebody's opinions are evil. So we still should respect. Or we sometimes should say, no, I disagree with you, in, in a respectful way. It's okay. In yeah, that, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, I totally disagree with that. And I do that. I would like. I, I totally disagree with obviously that stance and things, but I can't change somebody else's opinion. Yeah. It's just yeah, yeah. not. It's just, That's right. it's just. It's not. It's not mine. <laughs> yes, I understand. Yeah. So thank you very much for tonight's meeting. Welcome. Look forward and, to the next one. And hope to see you again. <laughs> yeah, we do it again. I, I hope somebody took some thing away from this and probably learned a bit more. And, can I knew who I actually am. Yeah. Thank you for your attention and see you. Bye-bye.